Hello and welcome to another vlog. This is a project vlog and is a vlog for the unbearable hoodie. So let's just jump straight into the pattern. I'm very excited about this. So this is what we're making today. This is the unbearable hoodie by Max Sear. Max, if you're watching, I think I've pronounced your surname correctly. If I haven't, I do apologize. Max is one half of Max and Vincent. They both design individually um, as well as release patterns together. And they have a fantastic boutique called Les Gassons, which I will post a link to below. And there's wool, there's needle pouches and enamel pins. And th some of this stuff is just gorgeous. And when I saw that there was a call for test knitters for this jumper, I just jumped at the chance to try and be part of it because I really love the designs. I took a class with Vincent and Max back in the Unraveled Festival back in February on colour work. And it was really, really interesting to understand more about how these uh, colour work jumpers are constructed and how you can take a, an, an image yourself and kind of create that into a pattern. I don't have a budding designer urge in me to try and like get a design out there, but it's lovely to be able to understand how you know, we do what we do and how we make make the garments. So that's the front of the jumper. Um, it's a top-down raglan. You can see the raglan, the diagonal, the sleeve shape in there, um, into the colour work with just the cutest little bear and then these little flowers. And then if I flick over, look, how awesome is that little hood on the back? So I'm lucky to be part of the test knit and I'm going to be making this for Nice two i'm doing the age two to three so olivia is going to be the lucky recipient of this jumper and in the pattern you can see it's a lovely pink with the with the uh the beer i've chosen bright yellow so i really love west yorkshire spinners color lab i've used it in lots of projects um it's 100 percent wool but it is machine washable so for little ones it is great it softens up really lovely um and I just love the, the vibrant colour. So I think that's going to be a fantastic sort of really bright hoodie. And then we're going to use Colour Lab um, in the contrasting greys then for the uh, for the lovely little bit. So let me just try and, I don't know if I can do this. I'm going to try and hold those three and then hold the pattern. So I think that's going to be fantastic. So this vlog is going to be following the progress as I uh, work on, on this project. It's a test knit. So for those of you that are watching this video that don't know what test knitting is about, because um, I know I have some non-knitters watching my videos, which is friends and family, which is lovely. And actually, I've had some really good comments on some of the vlogs about um, the behind the scenes bit and things that people who aren't knitters wouldn't necessarily think about. Um, in how we sort of construct items and, and clothing. So test knitters, you know, you'll you'll find a designer has an idea. So Max has had this for this beautiful beer on the jumper. And of course, you you design it and you you work up maybe one size or two sizes to try and see how the garment will look. But you really then need to try and gross that size up for, um, or gross the project up for all the different sizes. So this is from age two to three, all the way up to large adult sizes. Um, so often you'll find that designers will have test knits because they they work on scaling the size up or down. Um, but of course, you probably want to have it tested and make sure that, you know, it works for every size. You know, are the designs, do they, does the colour work sit in the right place? Are the, the armholes the right size? The armhole arms the right length, etc. So Max put a call out a couple of weeks ago for test knitters. And I'm sure they would have been inundated with people wanting to get on board and knit this fantastic project. So I applied, I put my details in, said I've made, I've done colour work before and would love to be a part of it. And I was chosen. So I've got the pattern before anybody else. I've got a day off today and I'm hoping that I'm going to get this cast on. Deadline is middle of August. So I'm basically just going to work through the pattern. It It's as it should be published. But of course, I'm fully aware that I'm doing it as a test knitter. So if there are things that I'm not sure of, there's something I don't understand, or I'm going through the pattern and I either spot a mistake or something doesn't feel quite right, um, I will then email back and forth um, with Max and Vincent um, 
and call things out and it may just be my misunderstanding it may just be something in the in the actual pattern um but of course the whole point of this is to give them feedback before the, the pattern goes live and of course being a test knitter you get something really cool before the general population so i quite like the fact that i get to do this got a couple of max's patterns queued up and really looking forward to going um and getting stuck into them so this is going to be the first one that i've done the unbearable hoodie and yeah i hope you enjoy i'll do a couple of videos as with some of my other project vlogs a couple of videos as i'm going at certain key points so we'll we'll get cracking and i'll try and do a little video perhaps of the uh the cast on maybe one just before we start the color work one where we finish the color work there's going to be a video for the hoodie even though it's only a small hood hoods are boring so yeah I hope you enjoy it. I'm very excited to be knitting it and um, hopefully uh, it won't take too long. So I'm doing the age two to three, so it's a smaller size. So I've got, uh, it's the 29th of June today, so I've got six weeks till it's due. I'm hoping I'll get it done way before that. Um, I've got a feeling that once I start it, I'm probably going to be a little bit addicted to it. So it's probably going to be one of those projects that I won't be able to put down. So let me shut up and get cracking because I'm not going to do any knitting sitting here talking to you am I? This might look a little bit awkward but I'm just casting on for the unbearable hoodie and it starts with a provisional cast on which means that we're going to cast on using this scrap yarn here so I've just got some grey from my stash that I've wound up for another project so I'm going to create the stitches on here and this isn't the yarn that I'm using. So once I've then got my number of stitches for the pattern, I'll then knit these with the yarn for the pattern. And this is effectively just like a placeholder. And what this is often used for is where you're starting the jumper. Um, so you might work the, the actual body, but then you'll come back to the provisional cast on right at the top with the neck. And then you'll pick the live stitches back up off here and it enables you to um, add on a particular collar type, for example. In this pattern, I'm guessing it's how we're going to do the hood. So I'm gonna do the provisional cast on, and I just thought, no way a tutorial, but you might find this interesting because it's slightly different. So we're using a crochet hook, but you don't need to be a crocheter to do this. You basically reach over and chain one, put the yarn to the back, reach over, chain one, and so, so forth. And you just complete that for the rest of the pattern. It's a little bit awkward because I'm trying to do it in front of the camera, but that gives you an idea. So we'll basically do this for the number of stitches in the pattern. There's a few different ways of doing a provisional cast on. This is my favorite because it's a lot quicker because you're just casting straight onto the needle. So there we go. So I will pop back in a little bit when I've finished that and we're ready to go. So that's the provisional cast on finished. So that's basically the stitches cast on in grey. And then what we will do at some point, I'm guessing, is one of these ends has got a little knot in. Uh, and then we will just undo this, pull on the cord and all of these will undo and then we'll be left with the live stitches. So now it's on, I'm just gonna start following the pattern. So I'm actually gonna knit one row before I join to work in the round. So basically I'm now gonna take my main color and I'm gonna knit, and that is it. So we've taken the provisional cast on in the gray. We've set ourselves up to hold those later on and then off we go. Look at that yellow. Perfect. Quick update video to check in then. It is Monday the 6th of July and 
we're making good progress. Progress did slow slightly uh, over the weekend. Um, lockdown restrictions in Wales have started to ease. So we um, were out and about looking around some shops. We went to my brother's Saturday evening. So progress slowed slightly, but making progress nonetheless. So finished the top half of the jumper. Um, you can see the raglan sleeves here have been completed and I've put the sleeves onto some waste yarn and we'll pick those up at a later date. You can see the provisional cast on that I showed you. Um, and then I'm guessing that we will then pick up, we'll probably cast off some stitches here, which will give the, the top collar and then the hood will be knit back and forth. I haven't read ahead on the pattern. I'm deliberately trying to, to just focus on what I need to do um, and not get too excited about all the next steps. So this is where we've got to to date. And then colour work wise, um, so this is the start of the Fair Isle section. So you can see, went into our two colours, we've got this lovely little grey section that's just appearing um, and this little checkerboard and then a couple of rows time, the bear will appear. So if I just hold this up this way and show you, that's where I am. And if I flick and bring in the pattern, here we go go there is the bears so we're currently doing this little checkerboard bit up here so a few more rounds and then we get the bears hat so not doing too bad it's not too shabby at all um one thing i just thought i would focus on though is actually the way i knit color work personally um there are a few different ways of doing it. Um, for me personally, I knit one-handed. So I hold both the yarns in my right hand as normal and I drop the colours. So I now need four grey. So we'll do one, two, three, four grey, and then I need two yellow. So I'll then drop the grey and then bring the yellow from this side and effectively the yellow is coming from underneath the grey. So we then knit our two yellow. And then I want a gray, so I drop the yellow, pick up the gray, knit the gray. And then I want two yellow, so I drop that down, pick up my two yellow. And this is how I do it. Um, it's a bit slower than the two-handed method, which I'll mention in a moment. But I think for me personally, it gives a much more even texture. Um, my stitches sit a lot neater. There's no yarn dominance, depending on which way you pull the yarn. If I took, I always take the gray or the next color from underneath so that we're wrapping. It does mean your, your, your yarn gets a bit tangled, but by doing it that way, you get consistency of color. If for example, I sometimes took this one and brought it over, but then the next time I went over that way, I might end up with the grey being more dominant than the yellow, whereas this way they're they're pretty consistent. So that's that's kind of how um, how I do it. The other way of doing it though is a two-handed method. So if I just separate my yarns a little bit, excuse the tangled knot. They don't normally get this tangled when I'm sitting on the sofa. Um, I move the the yarn around as I'm as I'm knitting. But if I show you this now, so we want four four grey. So with the yarn in my left hand, I would then pick four so one two three four and then I want a yellow so I'm then yellow gray yellow now that is a lot quicker because of course you've got one yarn in each hand um, the English style of knitting is with your yarn in this hand. So we're known as throwers because we throw the yarn around the needle. The American way is with the yarn in your left hand um, where you pick it. Now, this is a lot quicker because there's less movement in the finger. So you can really rattle through it. I don't do enough of it to get a really even tension. So I tend to prefer whenever I'm doing my fair isle to just do it this way. At the end of the day, there's no knitting police. There's no one to tell me what's right or wrong. I think my tension is a lot more even, um, even if it does take me slightly uh, longer time than someone else to do it. Um, I did do a course. I've got a little show and tell. This is um, the ombre hat 
who I can't recall the pattern designer's name. I'll pop that on screen. Um, but this is the ombre hat. And I learned to knit this with the lovely Jenny at Ammonite Yarns. And this was a two-handed project. So I did the whole thing two-handed. And what you can see, see some of my tension is a little bit uneven. So, you know, this is me being a perfectionist now. But some of these yellow stitches, they're not quite as dominant as some of these yellow stitches. So it's a little bit uneven, you know, to the untrained eye. You look at it, you see the lovely fade from the grey to the yellow. But... I don't think I do enough colour work, um, certainly not enough to practice and become as proficient as some of those Scandinavian or Fair Isle, Scotland, Shetland, Isles, Knitters and the like. Um, but I thought that was a really interesting project. Um, so I really enjoyed doing that and said that little bit of knitting that I just showed you is by no means a tutorial. Um, if you're interested in learning more about two-handed fair oil and you're in South Wales, get yourself along to Ammonite Yarns and the lovely Jenny, I'm sure, will be able to help you um, run a workshop. And if you're not in South Wales and can't get along to my local knitting shop, there are a number of tutorials on YouTube that I'm sure will be beneficial for you. But that's it. Just a very quick check-in video. Uh, with the latest progress on the hoodie, I will try and film some more at a later date, probably when we've got a bit of a resemblance uh, of a bear. That probably feels like a a nice point to uh, to check in. So I'm off to untangle my yarn and uh, get on with the pattern. Quick video then, and I've uh, bobbed out onto the roof because I think the decking boards uh, help to give a little bit of background to show off the beer. So it is Friday the 10th, and I've just cast on the sleeve stitches. So nothing to see here. They're on double pointed needles. So off we go onto Sleeve Island. But I just thought I would shoot a very quick video because I've now finished the body. And it is looking 
brilliant. Look at those cute little bears. So I actually got the pattern wrong earlier when I, I, I think I was describing it earlier in a video. Um, this is actually the front. So the bit that I think I was describing with the provisional cast on. Now I've read ahead in the pattern, that's actually the back. So we have three little bears on the front and look how happy they are. I love it. I really, really like this color work section with the, the little change of colors with the yellow and these lovely little flowers. You can't necessarily tell, I might cover this in a, in a future video. These ones here are stranded. So I carried the three yarns all the way around the back. These ones here, I did as intarsia, which means there's just a little tiny bit of gray there and a bit of gray there and a bit of gray there, etc. So I leave the gray yarn hanging. Um, they're not quite as neat, I don't think, as the Fair Isle ones, um, which is really interesting. So this is the first time I've done a project with both Fair Isle and Intarsia, but I wanted to try it. Um, we'll see how they block out, but there we go. Progress is made, so that's taken me a week. A week? I think it was the Monday, Tuesday. I'm recording this now, and uh, you'll have literally just seen the section when I said I was doing the colour work. <laughs> uh, so I think it was about a week, which isn't too bad at all. It's pretty quick going. I'm very lucky there's only 120 stitches, so when I'm in the round and whipping around, there's only five bears. So you've got those three on the front, those two guys, look at them on the back, and um, yeah onto the sleeves. So Friday today, I'm hoping to get the sleeve one at least done this weekend. I might get them both done, who can say? But there we go, just a quick check-in video. Okay, a quick check-in video then. So it's Sunday the 12th of July and we have two sleeves. So they were a lot quicker than I thought they were gonna be. They were a bit fiddly because we used double pointed needles. So we were knitting on uh, very tiny needles rather than the uh, the longer needle that you saw for the body but I really love this little jagged pattern that we've got on the edges uh, and on the cuffs so and I think that finishes it off really nicely matching it in with the body so that's all done so uh, quickly just going to show you the provisional cast on again so we talked about this at the beginning when I started and how we did the provisional cast on and we were then going to use this to pick up live stitches again so that we can work on the hood. So if I come in a little bit closer so you can see I've done a few already and all we're basically doing is there's a couple of ways you can either pull see so that way is really fiddly because you drop a stitch and then you need to correct it. So you can do it this way. The better way of doing it is you look, each stitch is almost like a V, so you wanna go into the left leg to make sure the stitch goes on properly. So as you're, you flick under the left leg and then you pull provisional cast on out and then the stitch is left on the needle so we can do that again we can continue out on pull now I used yarn that's probably slightly too thick from a provisional cast on but what you can off sometimes do is if you can see the stitches quite easily you can pick two or three uh, of the legs up at the same time and then it just all unravels let me see if I can do that so there's one two and I think that's a third and then if we give a tug no, I've got it jammed. So uh, yeah, the, the wool I used for the provisional cast on is a little bit thicker than uh, it probably should have been, but it was what I had to hand. So I think if I'd used a double knit, which is the same thickness, so this is an Aran weight, uh, 
it would have been a little bit easier. But you get the point. So anyway, I just wanted to record. It's very early in the morning. It's seven o'clock here. Mark is still asleep. So I'm not going to film too much more. I just wanted to show you. So we've now picked these stitches up. So these are now live again. I'll continue around. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come around. We're going to cast off a portion in the front. And then we'll work the hood back and forth to shape that. So I'll check in again when I've got a bit more progress on the hood. Further update on Sunday. The hood is finished. So we've finished the hood, picked up the stitches from around the neck. If I flip him over, you can see here. So we cast off, I'll sew this little end in later. You'll, uh, to tighten that stitch up. You'll never notice. Then obviously you've got the outer edge of the hood. And then you can see where we've picked those stitches and cast up, cast up, knit up. And then we've got the decreases here, which is just the shaping that is gonna bring it in. So I'm just about to do some Kitchener stitch to graph these two together. So I'm going to show you how I do it. Okay, so ably supported by my cameraman, Mark. Um, so I've taken the final bit of the hood and then we fold in half and then I've just pulled the cord long so that I can match the sides up. And then we are going to do kitchen a stitch, which is how we create a seamless graft. So starting with the yarn on the back needle. So we are going to use the thread as if to knit. So we knit off, purl, And then we pull off knit. So that is the sequence. And then we just give a little tug. So knit off pull. Pull off knit. If voila. So you can see the decreases at the back of the hood that take us into the point. And then the stitches have been grafted on. So you can see it's as seamless as you'll possibly get it using that Kitchener stitch. So if I turn it that way, you can see then the little V's here follow over to the little V's here. So the yellow's blowing out a little bit because of the evening light, but you obviously know that it's a, a nice bright yellow, whereas it looks more like lemon. So that's the hoods grafted on, um, which I was feeling really cocky because I thought I'd finished and I just needed to sew the ends in. But reading ahead on the pattern, um, because as I just mentioned in an earlier video, I haven't read ahead. So I'm now <laughs> going to make a drawstring. So I'm going to put a piece of fabric up around here that I'm going to pick up and make. That is then going to have a drawstring on the hood. So that's a surprise because I thought I'd finished. So um, right, on to the next bit. So there we go. So that's Sunday's progress. Might not get any more on it than today. Of course, we still need the two little cute little ears, but we shall see. Making good progress though. So that's not a bad day at all. That's basically a hood in a day. And I've not sat a knit all day. We've been out for a walk in the sunshine. We've been get some shopping. So speedy little pattern, but a great little pattern. So there we go. I'll leave you with a bit. Quick update video then, the hood is finished. Yay! But I've also finished the uh, the edging now. So you can see here, we've got this panel that goes all the way around. Um, 
and we've got some little holes at the end that the cord is going to pop through. So what I'm now going to do is make um, a drawstring cord effectively, so an I cord um, that will then sit in here and then we will sew over the channel. So we'll effectively make a really neat edge along the edge of the hoodie, which will be great to finish the hood off. Um, but then basically inside this channel will be the drawstring cord. So when the hoodie is on, you'll have the little drawstrings that hold down. So I'm going to cast on the I cord. Hopefully it won't take too long uh, and do a quick video as we go. Final technique video, I think, as a little update. So these are the ears. Look how cute. So I've made four of these and we just sew them together front and back. Uh, and then that's the little ears. But to put the little silver effect in, rather than doing that fair aisle as with the main body of the jumper, we actually use duplicate stitch. So I've done one little V and I will try and show you how it works if you've never seen it. it's very clever so you each stitch is obviously made up of the v's um so we're going to actually recreate this and we're just going to basically stitch over the top of the yellow in the gray so if we come in so we pop in through the bottom And then we pop into the, so we come through the middle of the bottom, then we go through the top left. And then we go back through the bottom. And then through the top right. So that's two. And I'm basically going to duplicate stitch across the pattern or across the ear, sorry, following the pattern. So through the middle, across the top. Now this is a useful technique if you actually make a mistake. Um, in one of my other videos, there's a, um, a, a shot of some mosaic knitting that I did with a lovely brown and cream uh, shawl that I made for Mark. Now, I actually made a mistake in the mosaic where I misaligned the pattern ever so slightly. And I corrected it by duplicate stitching the correct brown and cream to fix the pattern. I just mentioned it to Mark now and because he'd never noticed it. And what I often say is, what Mark doesn't see, I get away with. In crafting and in life. Um, so there we go. So we'll do the final one here. So in through the bottom. Top left. In through the bottom. Top right. And there we have it. So that's one row that we've done the duplicate stitch, and then I will do the corresponding number of stitches to finish for the pattern. And there we go. We'll have a front of an ear that'll be finished, that we'll sew to the back, and then attach them to the hood. Final update video for me then on the unbearable hoodie, and it's finished. So we do a little tiny happy dance. Look at those little bears. 
And I love the flowers, the little cable ties to pull the hood tight if they need to do that. And the best thing, look at those cute little ears. So yeah, that's the pattern finished. Um, I'm going to deliver it. Uh, it's been washed and blocked, so I'm gonna deliver it to Olivia shortly. And then I'm gonna hope to try and get a little video of her wearing it. But she's two and a half. So trying to get a two and a half year old to do anything that you want is obviously not gonna be fun. So I might just put her in it and then try and record a bit of footage. Well, we shall see. If not, um, I'm sure I can get her to pose for a photo. So I might pop a photo in at the end. But it's been a great pattern. So all told, it's taken me two and a bit weeks. Um, hasn't been, obviously it's a child's jumper, so it was never gonna take um, a, a particularly long time to get done. But even with the color work, you know, that, that color work, you, you saw me making really quick progress with it. Um, just look at those bears. They're so cute. Um, and yeah, it's just fantastic design. You know, we've got the lovely little chevron that sits on both of the sleeves. Uh, it's a really nice little detail that kind of draws it out to match the, the sleeves with the body. Fantastic little hood. Um, I really like this detail where I made the channel. So I kind of picked the stitches up around the hood and then sewed them together using mattress stitch. So it's as seamless as it's going to be. Um, and then obviously inserted the, um, the I-cord that I made. And it's just lovely. And then you've just got this lovely little hole here where you folded the material over and then the drawstring comes out. It's fantastic. I've never done that technique before, so I really, really like that. Um, and yeah, so I'm really, really pleased. It's been, as I said, a fantastic project. Um, kind of two little bears on the back, three little bears on the front. I didn't find any issues with the pattern at all. Um, a few of the measurements for me were slightly out. For example, it said that when I finish one section, I should be on seven and a half inches. I was actually on eight inches. Um, I've checked my gauge, which is kind of how how neat my stitches are. Um, and in a four inch block, the pattern designer says you should have X number of stitches and I check mine and I've got just a couple more. So my jumper is ever so slightly bigger than the, the measurements. But again, we're talking half an inch, three quarters of an inch. So overall, it doesn't affect the the, the overall shaping of the jumper. Um, but it's that kind of thing that from the test knit, I've been tracking as I'm going, I've been writing all of my measurements down. So I've got an email that I'm gonna send over to Max uh, when I've hopefully got a photo of Olivia wearing it, um, just to give my feedback, but it's a fantastic pattern. I hope it's released really soon for everybody else to get to knit it. I think it's a great project uh, for color work. I was going to say, I think it's a great introduction to colour work, but it is, it does have three colours um, in the same row, which we've talked about previously. And that's a bit tricky because you're managing multiple floats. But I, I don't think as a pattern, um, you'll find a better pattern, a better written pattern. Um, it's really, really clear. It's really straightforward. Um, they explain everything that you need to do in, in a great detail. There's so many patterns that you read that you're expected to be an, a really experienced knitter. And it's like reading another language sometimes. And you kind of got to look at it and go, what do they want me to do? But this is a fantastic pattern. It's really, really clearly um, laid out. It makes a lot of sense. You know exactly what the designer's thinking and, and what they want you to do. So I would absolutely recommend this pattern. And if you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, when the pattern is available, I will um, shout about it and post a link. Uh, I've actually had a few people comment and sort of say, oh my God, that's a great pattern. When is it, um, where, where is it from? And I've said that it's a test knit. Um, so if you're interested in knitting the unbearable hoodie by Max, I will let you know when it's available. Um, and that's it. So I'm going to end the video there. 
There might be some footage now of my niece wearing it. There might just be a still picture. We shall see. But as ever, thank you very much for giving me a little bit of your time today. Thank you for watching uh, another project vlog. I hope you've enjoyed following a project from start to finish again and seeing the different um, techniques and how it's constructed. If you like it, please leave me a comment. I love reading the comments that I've had so far on my other videos and, and interacting with people on YouTube. Similarly, been chatting uh, to lots of new people on Instagram especially, but also on Twitter. So please get in touch and let me know your thoughts. If you like what you've seen, you know, we'll do the usual YouTube thing. Please like and subscribe. It's always good to, um, to meet new people and make new knitting acquaintances. So thank you very much for watching and until we speak again, happy crafting. Come to me. Come and see Dad, Dad. Wow, look at that. Do a spin for us. Ooh. Yeah, big show off. Haha. <laughs> Going down the slide. One, two, three. Woohoo! <laughs>